have common sense if you notice there's a world around to not if you are thinking you can do whatever you want to do there is only one thing that i know is true about existence you may think that it's common it's not so common sense that we're dealing with oh hello there hi everyone what is happening guys it's episode six we're here we're still coming back you believe it week after week each time gets better and better and better it does or they get worse i don't know but either way we're going to keep going we definitely are i don't think i ever want to stop you guys are just doomed to listen to us talk that's day right day out that's right. If you're new here, everybody, I am Jalopy. This is Skylo22. We hope you're having an amazing day. Uh, this is episode six of Not So Common Sense. And I'm feeling really good about this episode because we have some really fun topics tonight. I think it's going to be a fun episode tonight. Same, same. I think you guys will enjoy it. And it's weird. There's so many things that, that we want to to talk about in life so it feels like there's just endless amounts of material for us to to talk to you about because we can just talk and talk and talk and talk and, and we just never stop this is true and it gets really frustrating too especially when we know like what topics are coming up for the week mm -hmm. and we want to talk and then we have to stop because yeah working you know, on this show is actually really hard to do because we we come up with ideas or topics that we want to talk about and, and we have to we're not allowed to talk about them then we're like I, but i can't and all the time skylo <laughs> starts talking about the topic i'm like oh yeah we should talk about that thursday on the podcast <laughs> and she, she's like oh yeah crap it's a nice way of him telling me to stfu mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty much pretty much welcome in to all of our viewers here at the live um recording right now out in the chat we see you we appreciate you we hope you're having an amazing day skylo how was your day my day was good um i did not for the first time have to talk to my kid's teacher so that's a plus. i thought you were gonna say your kid i was like okay well <laughs> i didn't have to talk to my kid it was a blessing that's a win right there wonderful <laughs> no like for once i did not have a, a meeting a little private one-on-one -on -one meeting with the teacher i'm starting to feel like a vip yeah you know just a just a me and teacher one-on-one -on -one session every time but no other than that it's been pretty good kids have been doing better with his homework um i've got nothing else going on around here i've de-stressed a lot i've gotten rid of a lot of responsibilities that i had yeah obligations i should say mm -hmm. um and that's nice good. isn't it it's so nice it feels like the weight of the world has been lifted off of my shoulders and now right. I can concentrate and focus on things that truly do matter and are actually going places. So that's like awesome. This podcast, this podcast it, that just a lot, listen, that just gives you more energy to put into the podcast, more time mm -hmm. to put in. So mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. I say dump it all off onto somebody else <laughs> and, course, and make this podcast go the great places. I know that it can because of all of you guys, guys, the, the, the amount, of support you all have shown to us has been incredible and yeah. i know we we gush about it every week but we we just we're blown away by it you guys are are blowing up our social media the amount of downloads that's already happening on all the podcast stations it's crazy it's yeah our youtubes our their tiktoks it's just it's it's crazy it really is and it's it's touching and i mm -hmm. love to see the the comments and people talking about different things that we've ex uh that we have talked about mm -hmm. that you guys have also experienced it's pretty cool to see like similarities yeah kind of proves pretty much our point that a lot of the things that we do talk about like it's not just us right it's alone well and you guys give us topics too and we love it when you give us topics we're going to be talking about some more viewer topics later on in the show and the topics you guys come up with are so interesting because they're so just from everybody's point of of like view on life and mm -hmm. and just the things that people are interested in learning about or talking about or just hearing other people talk about is very very interesting so we we encourage you all to please keep those coming in 
please get in the discord here on the jalopy discord uh you can comment on our videos on youtube you can email us uh, not so common sense nscs at gmail.com anywhere that you think to try to get a hold of us you can probably reach us with any topics that you would like for us to talk about and who knows they may make it onto the show maybe something that we do uh in the future i had a bit of a stressful day uh, in the sense of I am going to a wedding tomorrow. Well, the wedding is Saturday. Uh, I'm, I'm in the wedding, I should say. I'm a groomsman in the, in a wedding. A uh, good buddy of mine's say, like, wedding. The groom? <laughs> I'm not the groom, no. I uh, Thankfully, I'm not the groom. Always a groomsman, never a groom, and that's how I like it. <laughs> uh, but uh yeah i had to get packed because it's it's out of town for me where i'm going and uh it's it's a couple hours away and and i had to get packed and it's it's kind of stressful because as a groomsman i don't know what we're going to be wearing when why where how all that stuff all i know is i have my tux and if i'm in that all weekend that's fine i don't really know but i didn't want to be that slob that like shows up to the rehearsal and like gym shorts and flip flops and a tank top, you know, being just be a bum. Person. I want to be. I feel like for rehearsal, that that's fair game, honestly. Oh, no. But no, I think it's a pretty fancy place that we're going to. I'm really excited about it. Extremely happy for my friends that are uh, are tying the knot. Really good friends of mine. Uh, I'll keep their privacy and not say their names, but I'm sure they know who they are. A big shout out to them and congratulations to them on their wedding. I'm looking forward to it this weekend. It's going to be a blast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I had to pack and I had to get everything. And it's it's that stresses <laughs> me out. Does packing stress you out at all? A little bit. Sometimes it depends. Um, it depends on where I'm going. If I'm going somewhere like a short trip, then it's it's not so much. I usually just take a couple of things and go from there. But if it's something that's like really, really long then yeah it stresses me out a little bit because i you can't prepare for something that long let me ask you are you an overpacker or an underpacker i want to say i'm kind of neither so you're a goldilocks you're right right, right right in the middle like, you're just like, perfect yeah like i i do like tend to take like one or two things that may be a little bit over but it's not like over over where it's just like okay well i need three more shirts and this and that like i feel like okay just take some of the bare essentials something like something fancy something for weather like just that's fair normal things and then yeah figured, that's fair i'm i'm on vacation i'm gonna buy some stuff out there so right. like, i want to go shopping really quick and just grab like a is that a part of vacationing i never buy stuff when i go on vacations it depends on where i go a lot of places if i go to like a, a another country or something like yeah 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 like then yeah like you know i will go shopping see what i like to buy from like a touristy kind of um aspect i know like when i go to dominican republic there's drinks that i can only buy there that i'm i'm gonna be purchasing there right. are certain things in certain places like that i can only get there so yeah it just depends okay i'm an extreme overpacker are you oh my god it's a disease that you I need have. to invest in uh, 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 what are those things called? The vacuum sacks. Yeah, uh, my sister uses those. You yeah, she uses those. Those, those are amazing. If you're an overpacker. Yeah. I am a mega and overpacker, perfect. and it's it's terrible because like I won't use three quarters of the things that I pack. No joke. <laughs> like it's bad. I I for some reason think I'm going to go through 14 pair of underwear in a weekend. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? I just, I grab it all. I'm like, I can't be somewhere and run out of socks. What am I going to do? So yeah. I just, I totally, I overpack. I plan too far ahead, but you said you plan for like the weather. I do the same. So like mm -hmm. I'll have, I'll have for like all variations of weather. I'll have, well, this would be like a hot day. This would be like a warm day, a cool day, a cold day, a freezing day. Like I'm like. But then I need I one for each of those days. No. So so then I need one. Say it's two days. I need two for a whole a hot day, two for a cold day, two for a, so like oh I just God. I overpack no. so much. That's too much for me. Yeah, it's that's bad. Too much it's so bad. It's a problem. I don't know how to fix it. I should be on one of those shows. I feel like where they what intervention? 
is there probably i think there is some kind of a yeah i don't know i'm like a hoarder but yeah i'm like a hoarder (laughs) but with packing it's it's a it's a real problem i i hate it i've traveled so much that i just i need to have just carry on like that's it if i can't carry it on i don't want it if i need a suitcase i'll buy one wherever the hell i am and just bring the stuff back that way but no if i can't carry that shit on i don't Mm -hmm. want it with me I yeah, now that's had luggage lost. That's my problem. I I won't fly. I won't uh, check my luggage either. It's if it's not a carry on, if it doesn't fit in a carry on, it's not going. Luckily, mm-hmm. carry ons are still like small suitcases these days. <laughs> so if I if I have to fill my packing needs <laughs> i would you, would you ever go backpacking? Like I I feel like I don't. I no, you know that. how big of a backpack I would have to have? I know. That's why this is, that's disturbing to me. Like, it's just, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I no. I walk out of the house with what I'm wearing right the fuck Well, now it's and- funny because I'm a minimalist. <laughs> you know, you know that about me. I'm a minimalist. I, I like to have very little distractions, just- <laughs> very little things to have to deal with. But when it comes to packing, if I don't just have everything covered, I'll be so <laughs> mad at myself. <laughs> And then you got to get the toiletries. You got to have the toothbrush. Oh, you got to have yeah. the toothpaste. You got to have the the shampoo because what if the hotel you're going to doesn't have shampoo? You, you see, girl, you just you got to your makeup, your lotion, right? Your, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, I, I just I, I I think I just overthink. I'm an overthinker. No, I I definitely am the type of person that'll just buy all that like toiletries and stuff. I'll take my toothbrush and like uh my flat iron or a hair something for my hair but mm. other than that like toothpaste uh shampoo conditioners i will go and get that at the walmart buy wherever i'm staying at or like a local store just grab a few quick small things i mm-hmm. don't care that's totally fine with me the stuff that they have at the hotels most of the time will last me that first night and then i just go out and <laughs> get it and then i just leave it there because i don't fucking care about it you know like right. just, whatever these things cost me two dollars like, right I'm good no i understand <laughs> that I just think that if if I seem crazy to somebody and they think, oh, well, you're overthinking it, you're over, you're overdoing this. I don't like to think of it that way. I like to think of it as I'm prepared. <laughs> prepared for the move. I am prepared. <laughs> what is wrong with being prepared for any and every scenario that you may end up being put in? That's the way I live my life. Go to the Sahara Desert, but what if it's cold when I didn't? Start it could to be. Snow? It gets cold in the desert at night. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna need my skis. What if I want to go skiing? They're gonna have mm-hmm. sand dunes there. <laughs> All of that stuff. I am very prepared. <laughs> oh boy. What y'all oh call boy. crazy? I call prepared, guys. It's been a crazy, crazy week. A lot of crazy stuff happening. Uh, should we start the show? Should we jump into it? Yeah, might as well. All right. Well, you know how we like to start the show off with a little bit of current events, folks. Mm -hmm. We like to talk about some of the stuff happening around the world. Uh, I had a little hiccup there with my graphic on the live stream, but uh, what's happening, Sky? We've got some we've got some uh, updates, right, on things that we've been keeping track of. Yeah, with uh, Gabby, Uh, for those who don't know, we have been closely watching the Gabby Petito uh, disappearance slash murder. Um, They've been looking for Brian, her fiancé, and he has been reportedly spotted out at um, a site in uh, the national, one of the national forests, I think. They found um, tents and things like that around there, so they were looking at that. Uh, the father, his father, has now joined the search for him as well, which a lot of people were on the fence about the parents and saying that they were, you know, they're cowards and they're assholes mm-hmm. and this, that, and the third. They're they're basically, you know, hounding on these parents. But honestly, right. let's, everybody, come on, let's be real. If you're a parent, please, for the love of God, tell me that you would turn on your own child. I, I want to hear you say. Yeah, that. I'm not a I parent, think, and I don't think I could turn on my own child. I, yeah, just, I don't, I don't think, think there's yeah. a single parent yeah. in the world that uh, would ever, yeah, do that to their own kid. Um, but good on them for actually trying to find him. Yeah, because um, the dad joined the search, right? His dad. Yeah. 
the dad joined the search. The sister spoke out and said, you know, please, like, say something. Like, say something. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, they have the right idea of, like, they want they want to know the truth as well, just as much as anybody else. Right. But, well, um, I saw an interview with her family and her mom in particular, and they were talking about how him being found, they want him to be, they, they hope he's alive because, you know, he's the missing piece to their puzzle of them trying to figure out what happened to her you know without him they're never going to know you know so they're they're hoping to find him and hoping that he's alive and and that was their message to him was just turn yourself in already yeah. it's going to happen eventually you're either going to get caught or you know you're going something worse could happen but exactly uh dog the bounty hunter joined in on it and that was exciting news i thought it was. He did say that he did have some leads about his whereabouts. Uh, I did not hear much more about that, but except that he's still looking. Like he's a, obviously a ridiculous human being, but like if anybody could could find this dude, I feel like he's the one that could do it. Yeah, I don't know. I totally think so too. Uh, but hey, more power to him if he does. Like that's that's what we all want right now. We just want to know what's going on, and their family mostly wants closure. Yeah, uh, it's just terrible that that's something that we're all living in the type of life we're all living in right now. And that's just that's life, though. That's what's happening in the world. We had a uh, shooting in Texas. Yeah, unfortunately, this week, just another shooting happening at another school. Um, 18 year old kid um, at this point. I believe his name was Timothy Simpkins, uh, went into the high school, opened fire. Two people were shot. Uh, two others suffered from injuries. He was jailed on three accounts, but I believe as far as I know, as of recent, he was released on bail. So he had been let out. Wait, you're uh, kidding. I'm not kidding. He went into a school, opened fire, and got let out? Yes. Uh, released on bail one day after teachers and students shot. Correct. What? Yeah. That's a thing that happened. I'm sorry for being so silent right now. I'm normally not at a loss for words, but... It's a little ridiculous to think about, um, especially with other lesser crimes and people still right. in prison. Uh, I... I just I don't There's know. There's people in prison that got caught smoking weed. Like and, still in there. Yep. and they're still in there. It's nonsense, man. It's absolute yep. chaos out there. I don't know. Yep. It's just we don't we hate to be these people bringing you the bad news because we hate the bad news. Uh we don't want to be like one of those news stations, but it's things that are happening in the world and that do need to be talked about, do need to be shared in a non-biased way i feel as if we try to look at things from all directions here on the show and we try to view everything from a level-headed common perspective. sense perspective correct uh but something good that uh happened and i actually saw that somebody won this earlier today Ooh. uh venmo you know venmo you use venmo i do, I do. uh they did a, they put a tweet out last night and apparently they are for those who don't know Venmo is kind of like a, a modern PayPal. I know people kind of use to like send money and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they put a tweet out that said retweet this uh, with your Venmo tag, your your handle and uh, we're gonna just send random people money and they've been sending people five hundred dollars here and there just random. Random people that tweeted it out, and I thought that was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. They had, I think, what was it, $200,000 worth to give away, so people were doing it. I know I jumped on that right away. I could definitely use the extra $500. Who couldn't it nowadays? Oh, yeah. I, know, that's, that's I could use an extra bills. $5. I, I'm not going to turn any of it down, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, that's two phone bills for me right there. Let's go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's just something that's like I'm surprised more companies don't do because what great for one, it's great advertising. So their advertising level is it's kind of genius, really. They're like, look at us. We give away money. Follow us. <laughs> but also people are getting money. So it's kind exactly. of a it's kind of a win win. 
but yeah, I think uh, the the Venmo thing was kind of cool. I don't mm-hmm. think I would ever win anything like that. Mm-hmm. They wanted people to what tweet with a. Uh, uh, I'm sure I'm going to take off fifty percent of our listeners here, but a a GIF. That's vibey, yeah. Or GIF. 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 I don't know. I've been told so many different things. Anyway, a vibey, uh, moving picture, and the, uh, the sense I think that they're what I got from the the winners that I've seen is they were looking for people that were just being kind of like funny and cute. The 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 gifts that they were putting out, they were doing like funny cute gifts like animated cartoons and things Mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh so that's really cool there were a lot of the the you know feel bad for me stories out there it's it's incredible i mean i i i i understand i get it i get wanting to put you know your whole life story out there Mm -hmm. um to try to get this money but it's to me everybody has a story everybody has different things in their lives that they could need five hundred dollars for and i feel there's a lot of people who do it just for clout and just want to be like oh yeah whoa me whoa me whoa me when they really truly don't even have any issues and Mm -hmm. then there's some people who like should get this money because it is a couple of bills for them it is like an extra groceries or maybe they have a kid who they can't celebrate a birthday for and this is the one thing that's gonna impact that child's life you know what i mean like there's all these different things and i feel like there's a lot of people who take advantage of that and exploit different stories and yeah. make things up it's so hard to figure out who's real and who's not when it comes to I those agree. things it's irritating i agree speaking of who's real and who's not y'all Skylo and I live in two, we're, we're from two different, two completely different cities, Los Angeles and New York. And there's a lot of fake people in those cities. Mm-hmm. And you know when you're surrounded by those fake people? Traffic. I hate traffic. We're going to compare the traffic. A little segment we like to call City Slickers, L.A. versus New York. And, of course, I've got the L.A. perspective. Skylo has the New York's perspective. And traffic, I couldn't even begin to imagine what it's like in New York. It's a pain in the ass. I don't think I ever rage more than when I cross the the lines into New York. It doesn't matter which part of new york i'm coming from i the minute i hit new york it's like instantly my body knows that i'm there (laughs) because i just instantly get angry yeah when i'm driving it's the the craziest thing it's you see the traffic and the things that people stop for is absolutely ridiculous (laughs) it's just like why did we stop here it really makes me want to stop traffic all over again get out of my car and just scream at people like why are you <laughs> stopping here keep going keep moving like why like cause i don't know traffic. how people keep their sanity in in situations like that when i when i was like living right in the heart of la and had to deal with the traffic every day i i literally i went out and i bought a motorcycle to not have to deal with the traffic because in in california it is legal to lane split on a motorcycle as long as you do it carefully and there's like rules to it there's certain rules to it though you got to be in a certain lane and the problem is they don't teach that to the people in cars at the dmv they just don't teach it so everybody thinks that these motorcyclists are breaking the law and in reality they're not yeah. And people get mad at them. I've had people open their doors at me, throw things at me, swat Jesus their car Christ. at me, all because they're sitting stuck in traffic and I'm I'm getting to go up the middle, basically. And it's it's uh I don't know, it's crazy. Traffic in LA is I'm sure different than New York. New York looks and correct me if I'm wrong, it looks like it's more of a just stop and go 
get get stuck in a lane that you can't get out of and make the yeah. turn you want to make type of yeah. traffic it's, it's it's a lot of making an eventual left or right because you're constantly having to like cut around another so you gotta make three lefts to make a yeah, right to finally get around like oh i just missed my left well i mean I guess I can't go down the next left because that's a one-way street going the opposite way. So I'm right. gonna go to the next block. See, and that would stress me going. out it so much. Stressful. So, like, if you're driving in this in the city for the first time, I recommend not to uh, mm -hmm. avoid it. I know and you can get around a lot quicker sometimes, uh, depending on what part of the city, what time of the day, things like that. Mm -hmm. I used to go. Um, used to go in the early, early morning, like three, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning when there were there was nobody in the city and you could literally fly down the streets like there's <laughs> nobody and it's beautiful and it's nice and those things i totally 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 love but the other one i just i i can't if you hit rush hour right before it right after it it's just too much yeah it's too much you just want to kill everybody it's, it's, <laughs> It's horrible. It is horrible. LA uh, is more of a the it, it's easier to get around in the city as far as like it's not hard to get to you the street and stuff that you want to get to. It's just a lot of just waiting. You're just sitting <laughs> yeah. there and you move like an inch every 5 minutes. Yeah. It's the and I just don't do well with that at all. The standstills are the worst when yeah. you're on a bridge. My worst is when you're on a bridge trying to get in or out of the city or the tunnel, and it all fun like the, the lanes, there's like 10, 12, 13, 14 lanes, and then all of a sudden it goes into a little, 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 little tiny one person lane. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like all these people are trying to merge at the same time to get to this one fucking lane, and it's just chaos. And I swear people lose their so minds small. when they drive in traffic too. Like they don't they do. understand. It's like they just lose all motor function. Yeah, because you, you're trying to be careful. You're trying to get in. You're trying. You want to be aggressive enough, but not too aggressive. You want to be passive enough, but not too passive. Mm -hmm. like it's just this. It's just this whole thing that is just. I don't know. I know when I drive, I'm. If I'm in the city, city, I'm pretty aggressive. I'm more aggressive than I am passive. I I pick my battles, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely more aggressive, and I definitely make sure that I lead with my back because if you're gonna hit me. You're hitting me from behind, and you're going to be the one who fucks up, not me. I will lead that fucking battle every time. <laughs> but if I'm out here, like, on the island or anywhere else, then I won't. It'll just be something different. It'll just be yeah. more passive because there's a little bit more wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Just certain places you kind of have to. You have to be in there. Right. It's tough. That's fair. I think that... Uh... The only thing that really got me through some of the days in traffic, and this is going to sound, this is going to sound scripted, but it's not. And I, cause it's just, it's a thought that just came to my mind, but podcasts, mm -hmm. if you're stuck in traffic, you just got to accept, time. you got to accept that you're going to be in traffic. You got to, yeah. you got to let go of that. Oh my gosh. I wish this would hurry up. Cause this, it's not going to happen. Not in LA or New York. I can tell you that right now. And I've never even been to New York. So what's the best option? Either listen to music that you like or listen to a podcast. Mm -hmm. Because podcasts, believe it or not, will make the time fly by. Yeah. Imagine if Especially. you were sitting in your car right now listening to this pod or not listening to this podcast. You're just sitting in your car in silence, just trying to go and idiots all around you aren't moving and making mm -hmm. weird moves with their cars and all that. But imagine how at peace you'd be if you're just sitting here relaxing, listening to these two voices soothe your your ear holes. Welcome in to Not So Common Sense. Right, right. <laughs> Skyler's liable to even sing you a song one of these days. You never know. Yeah, it could, could happen. Any, but if you moment. are on the road listening to this right now, uh, thank you guys so much for that. Uh, also, look out, there's a bird. But I think it's the coolest thing in the world that people are listening to us on these podcast stations we've got a, gotten a lot of downloads from them and the the fact that we're now on as of this week we do have news on that we are now on almost pretty much every major podcast station except for two right now two of them that we're waiting on 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we're the last two to to go up on right now will be Pandora and Apple Podcast. But we're now mm-hmm. officially on Google, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Stitcher, Alexa, all the big ones out there, and and much more as well. If there is a station, guys, that you like to listen to, maybe you're just watching us on YouTube right now or something, but there's a, a radio station or a podcast station that you like to listen to and we're not on it, please reach out to us. Let us know because we would like to reach as many of you as possible and make it as easy as possible for you guys to access the show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that's just one of the coolest things that I can even imagine is being on all of those Mm -hmm. things going down the road Uh, it's fun for me to picture people just sitting in their cars listening to us in the middle of traffic if we can make you guys laugh if we can make you guys laugh at all in, in your car or on the bus or wherever you're at if we can make you laugh even for a second to make your commute a little bit better than we've done our job yep and That's it's just a cool feeling for. it's a cool feeling you know what's not cool sky what cringy stuff mm, well yeah no cringy like stuff it. is not cool which brings us to our next segment cringe corner Ooh. <laughs> like every mm. time Ooh. i know i get kind of <laughs> cringed out even bringing up the the segment honestly i know Tell me something that's cringy to you, Sky. I hate, especially being in the city and the round so many different people. People flirt in public, like really, really, like try hard flirt. I'm not talking about like the oh wow, you're like a little cute, like your your shoes look great or something. <laughs> I don't even know. I can't even think of it. I feel like no one's ever really flirted with me out in public. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that so many times, especially living in LA, that people have people are are interesting. Some people don't yeah. care at all. No. The, there was a dude, I remember I think I was on the phone with you or something or on Discord call. I was at this store and I was looking for something in the frozen food aisle and somebody was behind me and said, Excuse me, ma'am, do you know where the fries are? I think, do you remember this? No, I don't think so. It's just you said excuse me, and it reminded me of something that happened to me today. So, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so you'll, anyway. You'll all find out about it in a moment. <laughs> um. So the dude said, like, excuse me, are, uh, do you know where the fries are? And I thought he just thought I worked there because everybody thinks I work wherever I go. Right. I don't know why. But I said, no, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't work here. And he's just like, oh, well, I was just wondering because you needed something to go with all that shake. And I just oh, he did stared it. at him and was just appalled. Just was just the cringiest. I was just that's, like, oh, I gotta go. Uh, that's like the <laughs> oldest one that you can even it do. Was. And I was like, what? And he was an older gentleman, to be like, to be fair. It was just oh god just don't just stop just stop like save it for the places that are what does he think is going to happen flirting? in that situation what does he think is going to happen you're going to turn around and be like yeah big boy and go and jump on him and just start ripping his clothes off right there on the street like what does he think is going to happen yeah that's pretty what much are these people i've never experienced cat calling like oh on god. from either that perspective <laughs> So when people whistle at us like while we're walking down the street and they're in a fucking car. Like, what do you think we're gonna do? Kick off my fucking shoes <laughs> and start chasing you? Like, I don't understand. Why do y'all do that? Like, why? Why? Just yeah. stop the car, pull over and come and talk to me. Hi, I think you're very attractive. I would like to buy you something to drink. Like, can we go get a coffee? Like, be normal. Don't just go out of your way and make did you fall from the sky? Because like, like <laughs> just something stupid. Like, dude, no, right. like get away from me. Right. I can't. I can't. Ugh. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I understand it. People will do it like in grocery stores, just like in the line talking to the mm-hmm. cashier or something while there's like a whole line of people behind them. <laughs> what are you doing? This girl's not interested in you, sir. She's laughing. She's, she's laughing. It's because she's being polite, sir. It's her job. It's her job. Go away. Leave. Stop doing that. It's so <laughs> weird, guys. It's cringy, and y'all should stop. Uh, and adults should know better, which brings me to the next one. Adults acting like children. Oh, Jesus Christ. I think it's a phase. 
the what do you mean? go through. Like, I feel like most adults, they get to a point in their lives, especially ones that have kids, and they start to feel like they have to fit in or they have to, they're mm. losing a part of them. They don't know what's happening with their kids' lives and they're so out of touch. I remember, right. like, I feel like our parents did the same thing growing up, just... I don't know. Cool. My parents, my parents were actually cool. Like honestly, <laughs> they they didn't have to try. Like they were just genuinely cool parents. I think you know they were younger when they had me, so that probably helped a lot. But uh, I just couldn't imagine. I don't. I'm not even. I don't consider myself old right now, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I still don't even attempt to try to keep up with the the Gen Z. There's just no. There's no chance that I could do it. No, they change like their words and their meanings for things so fast. They, just, more than I change underwear. Yeah, I just, I just don't even bother anymore. I just don't care enough. I honestly don't care enough. So that that word means the same thing that you're saying, but my word is cooler. It's the same thing. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. Just stop trying to be like you know everything. <laughs> just stop. Yeah, okay. I just wish they'd stop changing the words completely. Just, yeah. just stop changing everything. Like, why do we need to keep changing these words? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe I am old, y'all. I cannot wait to be that <laughs> old man looking out the top window of my house when people walk by. <laughs> I can't. I cannot wait. It's old man jalopy. <laughs> Run. That's my goal in life. And I'd like gonna... shake a cane at him. I don't even need the cane. I just have one. It's gonna be at an old folks home, and all the other residents are just gonna be terrified of you. I think I would be the life of the party at an old folks home honestly i think that's where i belong i think i belong in one right now all right we'll start looking for stuff. i would be the I mean, bingo king pamphlets? have you ever played bingo with old people uh or in I general been to like a I bingo hall because mm. i have I've always wanted to. I and you know what's have. really funny? When I was in college, I actually had talked a bunch of my friends from college into going to bingo with me. And we <laughs> did. We all went to bingo. We were like at our own like little college table right there at the bingo. And everybody loved it. Like everybody was super nice, except for the one old lady that, that I'm pretty sure wanted to swing her walker at me. <laughs> she wanted to win. She wanted to win and she didn't. And I did. And she was not happy about it. Uh -huh. young buck stealing her yeah thunder. yeah if us college kids weren't in there she would have won for sure <laughs> but bingo's fun I, I i tell you i i do like bingo i've just accepted that i just like lazy people activities <laughs> <laughs> there's not really much you can do with bingo right bingo is just sit and eat and dab some ink on the paper you're good to go <laughs> That's my kind of sport I like right Kino there. So much. Kino, yeah, that's a great one. That was a really good one. But yeah, adults, they gotta stop. They gotta stop acting like children. Uh, what else, Sky? What else is just cringy that people are doing? People that just ask way too many personal questions in mm. your life. Like they just want to know every especially people who like don't deserve to know. I can understand if it's just like uh, somebody who you're very close to. Right. You know, somebody who but like a best friend or something, but just some random people just want to know about where do you live? What do you do for work? What do you have a wife? Do you have kids? Are you married? Like, do you, are you dating? What kind are of you people? writing a book? Like, lady, like know? stop. Your, I don't know why it's a lady, but let's stuff. be honest. It probably was. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's too much for me. It's, I can't deal with it. Yeah. Like, don't pretend that you care about me as a person. You're just being nosy. Stop being nosy. When do, when does it switch, you think, from being nosy to actually genuinely caring? Or does it? Um, I don't know if it ever well, I want to say it does. I think once you get to know a person, like really get to know a person genuinely and actually care about that person, then I feel like it becomes a genuine thing and it's not really just nosy mm -hmm. i have friends that are like some of my best friends that they only ask me things about me they don't necessarily care about asking about other things in my life and i right. initiate those conversations so i think that's what you have to look for and then there's people who are just like well what's going on at work what's going on like i kind of feel like those are the kind of people that genuinely don't care about you as a person as a whole mm-hmm 
that makes sense. It's yeah, people were. I just don't care enough to ask people about those personal questions. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. I don't want to know your personal. It's your personal life for a reason. I don't yeah. need to know it. That's for you to know and me to never have to hear about in my life. <laughs> uh, but I, it, it is weird. Some people are they they have the complete opposite view on things. They just want to intertwine. Honestly, I kind of feel like it's more or less a thing for themselves. They want to see if your life is worse than their life, and they want to compare it and make it make mm -hmm. themselves feel better about where they're at in their lives. Yeah, because like you'll go to like a say it's like a reunion of some sort where you haven't seen mm -hmm. people in ten years or whatever, and then they mm -hmm. just start asking all these like really personal questions that don't matter. They don't matter, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's it's. There's a difference in trying to get to know someone and that, you, that you're actually interested in knowing and just asking personal questions to be nosy. There's a huge exactly. difference. There's a big difference. And I feel like you can get to know somebody just by like activities and just the way they are as mm -hmm. a person um, than asking questions that make no difference if you know the answer to that or not. If, if it doesn't make any sense, you don't, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't need to know my mother's name and what she does for a living and where she's at. You don't need to know if I'm currently dating somebody or if I'm going through a divorce or if I'm, you don't need to know these things. You just mm -hmm. need to know me as a person. Ask me questions about myself. Mm -hmm. What do I like to do? Where do I like to go? Like, that's cool. I can tell you like things like that. Right. But just don't make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a fine line that people, uh, they don't, they don't know how to read the room. Uh, and that's okay. A lot of people don't, but uh, it is cringy though, and and I don't like it when people do that kind of stuff. So just just read the room, folks. That's what use common <laughs> sense. That's all. Yeah. That's what this whole podcast wants you to do. It's just we just want to spread some common sense. Mm -hmm. One thing that it's clearly people are lacking their common sense here is the people that use their freaking cell phones on speakerphone when they're out in public. <laughs> They're at the grocery store. Yeah. They just got their phone on speakerphone, like laying in their cart, just having a full on like private conversation. <laughs> and they don't even care who hears it. And it's just awkward. Like it's cringy. Yeah. And like the other person, the person on the other end of the line, they don't they might not even know. Yeah, that's the worst. They're telling you like a personal story right? about themselves. Just like, oh my god, I got the, these herpes on my asshole the other night, and they're, <laughs> they're <laughs> on speakerphone at the fucking grocery store right next to the lettuce, and you're over there trying to get some fucking carrots. Now you don't want the fucking carrots, but you're hearing fucking Lucy and Timothy over here talk about fucking herpes of the asshole. Classic Lucy and Timothy. <laughs> Classic Lucy yes, and Timothy. The headsets. The, yeah. Like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, there's headsets out there. And uh, our friend O'Henry, you guys will probably hear us talk about a lot. He, like, refuses to get them. I don't know why. Drives me he crazy. Uh, but uh, he, uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to start, I'm going to just buy, I think, a whole box of of headsets and send them to him. Uh, yeah, but I don't think he really is. puts puts me on speakerphone when he's in public, so that's good. He'll, no. uh, uh, but he still needs some headphones. They are out there. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, don't do that, guys. Put put get some headphones. They're accessible everywhere. They really There's are. even cheap ones out there that you don't like. If you if you have a, a, an iPhone, then you should be able to afford some headphones to go with it. You know what's and worse? What's what? worse is the people who do this. And then get mad at you when you react to the <laughs> fucking conversation. Mind your business. Well, I would if you weren't broadcasting it over a PA system down aisle four at the grocery store. It drives me nuts. Oh, my God. I, I can't help but react. And sometimes I do. This one lady I remember at the supermarket, she did yell at me because, like, she was talking to somebody. I don't know who. They said something funny, and I giggled because I laugh <laughs> at everything, especially when I'm uncomfortable. I fucking laugh. So I giggled, and she's like, excuse me, were you listening to that? I'm like, I just, it was very <laughs> loud. I apologize. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but it was just there, and I was. I, I would just, no, I wouldn't have said that at all. I'd have been like, yeah, I heard it all. Hey, she has you on speakerphone, whoever she's talking to. 
Did you know I that? Embarrassed. I felt embarrassed that I was listening to this person's fucking conversation, even though they had it out to broadcast. It made me uncomfortable. I didn't know. I just, I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, it was it's a, situation. it's an odd thing. Uh, well, one of the things I worked with a lady uh, one day, well, not one day. I worked a, almost an entire season on a, on a show with this lady, uh, and she would always do the text to speak or speech to text. So she would mm -hmm. say out what she wanted and then it would text it. And literally every text message, she would text all day long. We were, we had to, we were basically beside each other all day long, every day. And we'd just be sitting in a room a lot and waiting on production and things like that. And she would say things like, no, I'm going to pick up some milk on the way home do we need eggs question mark and or when she would mess up something backspace 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 I never, I never understood how that works because every time i did it it would type out backspace backspace <laughs> <laughs> no like, she had it figured out <laughs> and i was like you're literally holding the phone to do this just type it out <laughs> right <laughs> i don't know why people why that. would that is do you know how annoying that gets after a while yeah oh that would drive me fucking crazy imagine if i just sat here for this whole entire show and did that's all you heard was me doing that texting somebody doing that now imagine that for eight hours to 16 hours a day every day for oh like a God. year that sounds awful it was terrible everybody oh hated it everybody hated it she didn't care at all she did not care at all she was uh she was one of those people that you could tell even if you just said something to her she would have just kept doing it yeah you know those type of people mm -hmm. uh, someone who's uh, a little confident cocky yes mm -hmm. those are the people be. the the that's the mega cringy the the people that are in a crowd that are just way overconfident and cocky about everything mm -hmm. And they they really no. shouldn't be. You know those people, the the tool bag guy or like that that my shit don't stink girl, and you're just like you need to be taken down a couple of pegs, sweetheart, because you you ain't that great. Like yeah. you need to stop. Those are the worst. Those are the worst. I see them all over the place, all over the place. I hate those people. <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere and they are. They're, they're, i feel like they're the same people that do the one-uppers they're the same people as one-uppers yeah like they just have to be the spotlight almost and it's the worst kinds of people that want to be in that position just like and no you, matter what they you, you're wrong on what you say and they're right oh, yeah. it's it's a it's a no let me tell you why you're wrong type of situation it, it doesn't matter what it is Mm -hmm. They're the, the actually folks, mm -hmm. basically. They are. It's just, I just can't stand those kinds of people. And, and some people just, they can't help it, I think. But it's no. cringy. They need to. They need to learn. My favorite is the people who are hypocritical about something that they themselves are doing. For example, like someone could just be like the nastiest person, like picking their nose, picking out their like wedgie through their ass crack, sniffing their fingers, like disgusting. And then they'll point and look at somebody else who's doing something like that they find disgusting. Like, oh, look, look how gross that person is. Mm. Like, what do you, what do you, yeah, like hypocrites. Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah. you ain't shit neither. Like, why are you, why are you egging on this person? Sit the, the fuck down. The loudest person in the room is normally the, the dumbest honestly that yeah. or at least normally has the least amount to say yeah in in reality uh, and yeah. i wish people could see themselves i'm telling you that would be my superpower is having people be able to see themselves through my through point of eyes. view through my eyes just for like five minutes just i just want you to see yourself through my eyes just for five minutes to see what you're doing <laughs> and how you're acting that's actually a pretty legit power. I think that's yeah, like, that's that's kind of cool. <laughs> I kind of want that too. That's a, that'd be a great super. What 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 would, it, what would the, the name be though? It would be I don't know. Uh, reality man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm re <laughs> I'm common sense guy. Perception. Yeah, I don't I'm know. Perceptive. You know, 
<laughs> I've definitely been uh, not perceptive and and things in public when I've done one of the most cringiest things. Not everybody else is cringy. Sometimes we're cringy ourselves, and I've definitely done yeah. this. Uh, when someone waves at you and you wave back and they're not mm -hmm. waving at you because There's someone they're else. waving at someone else. <laughs> That's terrible. That is a terrible time. For the folks who are watching or listening to the podcast and not watching the, the remarkable display that Jalopy just did here <laughs> with acting out the whole scene as he said that, y'all are missing out and I apologize. But please go to our TikTok or our YouTube and you will see that. that yeah. Was great. That's exactly, I... yeah. <laughs> I've done it on many occasions, though. That's why I feel like I'm so good at it, because I've been there on too many occasions. I don't know why I think everybody's waving at me like like I'm somebody that they should know. But You're just some basic bitch. I'm yeah. just some guy that avoids the public at all costs. But they, this random person knows me, apparently, so let's wave at him. I don't know. I think it's my friendly nature. I just think somebody's waving. I'm going to wave back. Hey, how you doing, stranger? You know? <laughs> How crazy is that, though? When we're growing up, we're told not to talk to strangers, don't take puppies from strangers, don't go into cars with strangers. Yet here we are, somebody waves at us in the middle of public, mm -hmm. and we're like, oh, hey, friend! It's just so natural reaction, I think. When somebody's Uber friendly drivers. to you, you just be friendly back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe, uh, I don't know. Luckily, I have very little to no shame at all. So it doesn't, it's not a big deal to me when it happens, but it is cringy. Like, it's just like, oh, really I feel like I should just go crawl in a hole right now. Uh, but I'm not going to. I'm actually probably going to go up and talk to this person and make a joke out of what I just did because humor is my deflection. And <laughs> that's how I'm going to move on from this. Because uh, I don't know, I don't know what else you do in that situation. You really can't do anything. I mean, just shrug, do another little wave goodbye, kind of like as quickly as we said hello. I we are departing our ways. I was <laughs> laughing earlier about uh, something you said that uh, pertained to what happened to me today. I was walking home from getting lunch at a place down the street, and mm -hmm. it was kind of a crowded sidewalk and whatnot. And I got through like this crowd of people. And then I, s <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> how Midwest I am, is <laughs> I said, excuse me, to a pigeon <laughs> that was walking on the sidewalk <laughs> as I step out of its way to let it continue on through. <laughs> Not even thinking, uh, like I was just in that mode of how you pass like through crowds excuse me excuse me oh midwest people say oh a lot uh oh no oh. oh, sorry sorry oh, go ahead thanks uh i don't know it's just it's a very big it's a very very big thing in the midwest that people say the ope thing and uh i don't know it's just a it's just a common courtesy thing i think it's it's obviously it's all over but it, there's a lot of they always call it the Midwest uh, personality, I guess. I don't know that country uh, southern hospitality type thing or something. I don't know. But it wasn't even that for me. It was just me just being absolutely oblivious to life walking down the street, just wanting to eat my food. <laughs> Saying excuse me to a pigeon. And I said, I by. did. I said, I, and but to that point, somebody saw me say that. I saw them see me say that, so I was like, oh, I said, excuse me to that pigeon, to this random person down the, walking down the sidewalk, and they laughed, and I laughed, and then we went on with our day. <laughs> so, that was, that was another one of those cringy moments I kind of had. It wasn't too cringy, but it was a little bit, uh, a little bit awkward. Uh, yeah. But yeah. yeah. One way to not be awkward, but get your, uh. Get your what laundry out there. Get mm -hmm. things off of your chest. Is to do things anonymously, folks. And you can do that in our next segment. Viewer topics. Our first viewer topic of the day. 
anonymous confessions. These are fun. Mm -hmm. These are definitely fun. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of things that people love, want to share with the world, but they're, mm -hmm. they don't really know how to say it. Uh, I agree. We've actually gotten a few anonymous confessions, so obviously we don't know who they are. But they're actually pretty funny. <laughs> There's some really funny ones, actually, that I'm excited. Uh, what's what's one of your favorites here, Sky? So one of my favorites is because whoever this is, I I can relate. You are my spirit animal. <laughs> Whenever they sleep with stuffed animals, they make sure that their head is above the blanket so that they can breathe. I do the same thing with all of my <laughs> stitch dolls, like any animal, like stuffed animal that I have, even my own pets. But I mean, like the pets are alive, so I can kind of understand that. But like I do it and I, I don't know. I just feel like it just makes it better. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That stuffed animal. I mean, what if you start farting, man? That thing's going to really yeah. be Dutch oven in there. It just it needs to be able to breathe. Yeah. I don't know. That's. That's silly, but it's also relatable because if I had a stuffed animal, I would probably be the same way. <laughs> no joke. That's just who I am as a human. And I'm okay with that. Good. Uh, Glad to know it. Another thing that we got here is someone says, I feel worse. Not bad. I feel worse when pets die in fires than when people do. You know, I can I'm that way that. with like movies, like when the pet dies in a movie. Yeah. I'm like, oh, why couldn't it have been the owner? <laughs> yeah. Like, why did they kill the dog? Yeah. It's 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 bad. It's so horrible. I think uh, a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people are on that same love of animals level that some of us are yeah. on. That's definitely me. I'm just like. I think it's because the, the, the animals don't really know why they're, they're being innocent. injured or what's they're happening. Innocent. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, but, yeah, like the movies, man, that's about the only thing that can make me cry in a movie is like when an animal dies in the movie. Yeah. That's like the only thing that can even get me even remotely like teared up for a movie. Yeah. And I, I don't know. What's another one we got here? Moved 13 miles away from friends and family. Happiest I've ever been. I honestly 1300 is what they said. 1300? Yeah. Yeah, what did not I 13. Say? You not just said 13. Miles. Oh, I just moved 13 miles down the road. Listen. <laughs> Reading's hard, okay? Yeah. Listen, I can relate to this. I can relate to this. I think the happiest I've been was when I moved, like, the furthest away from anyone I knew. It was almost like a fresh start, and you could just... It was just relaxing. I didn't have obligations that I needed to worry about. Yeah, I missed some of my friends and family, but I loved it. I loved being away. And yeah. Free. It's free. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, this one resonated with me a little bit. Uh, just because, you know, I, I know a lot of people that have dealt with this and I've dealt with like the anxiety, depression, things like that. But this one is uh, everyone thinks I'm the happiest person they know because I've become so good at hiding my depression. And I think a lot of people do that. Yeah, I was going to say I, I called it the mask when I was younger. I'd say like I would go to school and I would go places with this mask on and then I would get home and the mask would come off and no one would ever see what was under the mask. And I feel like a lot of people can resonate with that. I feel like there's a lot of people who go through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is sad that that one is anonymous because I feel like people like that need to, to kind of talk more and be able to talk about these. Things yeah. More. Well, like we talked about last week, you know, mental health is under the stigmas. It's, it's no, uh, no joke. It affects everybody. And, and we you can check our TikTok and our Twitter and, and our, all of our social media. We have it on there where people can go. There's hotline numbers we have listed that you can call. There's there's help out there. And anonymous if you ever, help. there's anonymous help, too. There's definitely yeah. anonymous help out there. So uh, it's <laughs> now this one made me laugh a little bit. 
Uh, I love my sister's dog with all my heart. I'm pretty indifferent towards my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a that's I resonate with that one a hundred percent. I could totally no, I I I uh, I'm just just kids in general. I think I wouldn't. Like, I'm just more <laughs> like I'm that guy at the party that makes friends with the dog. Same, honestly, same. They just follow me whenever there's animals at a party. They just completely follow me. Mm -hmm. Um. I think uh, another one that I resonate with this one too. Tell me if it's just me thing in the spirit of it being October and Halloween y, but does anybody else also turn off the lights downstairs, like in like a basement area or like something like an attic? And then they run really fast to get back to like the main floor where the lights are on. Because I know in my basement, like, I turn off the lights to get down there, and I'm booking it up the stairs to get back to my living yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, not since I was seven. <laughs> I still do that to this day, and I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, no, I don't think that's been a thing for me. That's funny, though. Uh, I've never, the, the dark has never really bothered me. I don't know why. It probably should have. The dark is a scary, <laughs> creepy place. I just, it's just not anything that ever really bothered me. But I've also never really had the the fear of monsters type thing. Mm -hmm. Like that whole fear of like mythical creatures and monsters and stuff. That That's never really been like one of my concerns, especially even as a child. It just wasn't, uh, wasn't a big mm -hmm. thing for mm -hmm. me. Now, I did wholeheartedly believe in Santa Claus until I was like 21. But... Wait. What do you mean? So Santa Claus isn't real? No, he's definitely real. Uh, he oh. uh, no, I I was definitely not one of those kids that to do that <laughs> at all. But you, um, it sounds like you would be a perfect, you would be a perfect candidate for our next topic. Someone on a reality TV show. Oh God, no. <laughs> no. Hard pass. Would you go on a reality TV show? No. Not. I would not. None of them. All. None of them. Not a single. Oh, hmm. Okay, I do know there there are. Hmm. Maybe naked and afraid. One of those. <laughs> kind of like a survival one. I would probably be really good at one of those. Or maybe like the fear factor, like something like that. What you're, you're like? You just went from not being able to be on one at all to like the worst one that there ever was <laughs> listen, to exist. Listen, there's not many things I fear except darkness. That's the only thing. And if there's money involved, I will sit there and shit my pants while being afraid in the dark to get this money. I do not care. They would I lose me. They would lose me when you have to eat something or get in a tub with a bunch of bugs or snakes or something. Or That's where they would lose me. Well, I would. That wouldn't even be a. I'd just laugh and walk off set at that point. <laughs> That's not even. <laughs> Thanks for your time, guys. It's been fun, Joe Rogan. <laughs> It's we'll see you. Everyone, have a great night. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. Uh, don't get eaten. <laughs> we'll see you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to do in that situation. I wouldn't yeah, even no. tell them that I have a fear of sharks because if that was even a thing, like that's they the would, quickest way to get rid of me. They yeah, uh, they would put you right into one of the tanks. I, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with all the other stuff. I'm okay with all the other stuff, but all the other reality TV shows, like the 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 Bachelorettes and the real world like when i was younger i wanted to be on like the real world road rules i was like that looks like fun i just want to get fucked up have a lot of sex like let's go now that i'm older i'm like that just sounds tiring <laughs> i uh listen i'm gonna it. i'm gonna tell you something one of my anonymous confessions here <laughs> i have auditioned for one of those uh mm -hmm those type shows i will not say which one uh, but i i've auditioned for for one of those and it was at about eight in the morning or something like that it was super early seven in the morning something at a bar this is where they held these auditions at this was before i moved to la to become an actor and and actually take an acting career serious you know this before i decided to make that jump uh i just thought it'd be fun and everybody's like you should definitely go audition for this and i was like all right let's go let's do it and i went there and it was at a bar early in the morning and they were giving out they were selling alcohol 
they weren't giving out. They were selling alcohol at the bar, but they were also giving out like jello shots and stuff at <laughs> seven in the morning. Sounds like the perfect time to drink. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm still like just trying to wake up. It, it was brutal. I was I was super tired and, and it was but I was like, you know what? This this audition starts the second you walk in the door. Yeah. The second you walk in the door before you ever even speak to anybody, you're being watched. You're a hundred percent being watched. They're, they're casting the, the people that they think are going to be perfect for the show. Yeah. And that was in my mind going in and I walked in and I was like, you know what? We're going to full send it mm -hmm. here. And I did. I took any shot. Anytime one of the, the, the girls walked up to, to me with a, a shot i took it uh and i also w drank a bunch of and i say a bunch is rare for me i'm not a drinker and i drank a lot a lot of the uh the guinness uh the tall guinness drafts i don't know how many of those i had but several of those with all the shots that they'd get i was like i'm just gonna go full on like i'm ready to party because that's what you know that's, that's what these what shows are all about yep and I was just making friends with everybody, too. I was just <laughs> going from group to group. I was really, like, the actor in me came out in the sense of, like, you know what you got to do here. Get out there and do it. Uh, long story short, they didn't hire me. And I just got really drunk at 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning. So, uh, um, I would have done it, though. I would have done it then. Now, I I don't think I... I, used to, I still... I still don't know that I wouldn't do it. It would just depend on the show. Something like Survivor? Absolutely. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, the Amazing Race? Something like oh, that yeah. where you're not where you're not turned into uh whatever the they're Yeah, you're not turned into a uh <laughs> Snickers or Snooky or whatever her name is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wanna be one of those yeah, I don't people be a that are housewife. Right. Like if yeah. I were going I would I'm going to make some some fame and fortune from this. I don't want to do it with a little bit of dignity, if possible. Mm -hmm. I'll even go on that that one show, uh, The Floor is Lava. Ooh, that one, that looks one would like just be, a would be fun. fun. That's, yeah, that's just yeah, a blast. Like, the, the Hidden Temple thing. Like, I would do all those game show kind of things. Like, those, like, activities. Yeah. Even um, Ellen DeGeneres. Like, she has a talk show. Not a talk show. The game show, the game of games, I think it's called or something. It's hysterical. Mm -hmm. Like the, I, I would totally go on that and make a complete fool out of myself. You know, they. <laughs> uh, I know we haven't really talked about the. We're not doing nostalgia this week, but I got to talk about it. You know, they they're re they're bringing back Legend Legends of the Hidden Temple for yeah. adults. Yeah, I would totally be down to do that. I uh, actually almost got called in for an audition to be one of the. Uh, What's the, the, the dudes? No, the dudes that jump out of the thing at the end to try oh, to God, stop you. The temple, yeah, the temple guards. Yes, thank you, O'Henry. Uh, the temple guards are uh, scary to me. They were when I was a kid. They scared <laughs> me. Uh, so to get the chance to possibly audition as to be one of those uh, was just it just kind of made me giggle. I I didn't do it, but. It made me giggle at the fact that I could, because that was like one of my favorite shows growing up as a kid. Yeah. I loved that. The, the Silver Snakes. Me. The puzzle at the end with the monkey, it killed the me. The three-piece puzzle three that nobody could pieces. figure out. <laughs> Why couldn't anybody figure out three pieces? Mm, they I couldn't. Just, I don't. Because kids know. suck at everything. <laughs> and that's why. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's just that's just the truth mm -hmm. of it, uh, mm -hmm. but some of them grow up and they become a little successful, which brings us to our next viewer topic. And this was a very interesting. You want to tell us about it, Sky? Yeah, the different perceptions of success. One of our viewers had mentioned this to us, and they wanted to kind of get our enlightenments of people who are unsuccessful, successful, and hyper successful. Like, I feel like they. I guess they want us to kind of see our perceptions of what makes us successful okay to me it's just it's i feel success comes with what you do with your life i feel like success is 
where you end up and how many people you've impacted and things like that. I feel like success is more than just how much money you make and what house you live in and the cars you own. And I feel like success is more of an internal thing. Of the like of the difference that you make, basically, in society. Basically. And yourself. You know, you're unsuccessful if you're if you're working a job that you hate and you're just miserable and you just want to hate life and you just it sucks. I feel like I feel like you're more successful when you're doing the things that you do love and you are okay with. Um, I don't know. I just I feel like success yeah. and hyper successful if you can radiate that feeling of being passionate about something and having that trickle down to your children if you do have children or to other people i feel like that makes a huge difference no i agree i agree and and that's an interesting take because most people when they think of success they immediately go to money right yeah, i feel exactly. like they are probably uh well that because that's society society yeah. does that they they it makes you think, oh, to be successful, I have to make a lot of money. And me being the hippie that I am disagrees with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very much in line with you. I think that uh, the impact that you make and the influence you can have on, on others, uh, hopefully positive, uh, that's <laughs> what makes things successful. You know, like it's a... Uh, it's fulfilling, I think, is mm -hmm. the word. Fulfill being yes. fulfilled, I think, is what makes you successful, at least in my eyes. What would make me feel successful is feeling f fulfilled. That's a tongue twister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think most people, again, they want to make a lot of money. But I do, I got to give credit to, uh, you know, our generation and even Gen, Gen Z coming up here, like, I think we're starting to put a little less emphasis on money I think because so we're realizing that uh, it's not necessarily for one, we're we're just in a crapper financially in, in mm -hmm. the world. The whole world's just in the crapper financially. So, just, you know, buying houses and stuff like that, it's almost seems like it's it's off the market for for a lot of people. It's just like it's out of reach. It's something that a lot of people will never get a chance to do. Mm -hmm. And I think people are realizing they're like, I'm not. Why do I want to work my entire life away to just give it all to a bank for a house? You know? Yeah. Pay a so, mortgage. Why? So I think people are a lot of people are. Uh, and obviously it can go very wrong with the Gabby Petito situation. But a lot of people are doing the van life thing. I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many people I've seen that are converting, buying vans or buses or something of that nature and converting it into their home. Yeah. I would a thousand percent do that and travel with that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I'd rather have a van like that in every, in every country or continent or wherever I wanted to go than have one house, one giant house in some place that doesn't matter. Yeah. I get to experience a lot more and just be free. And I feel like I understand. And I know there's going to be people, well, you need money to survive. I understand yeah. you need money. We all need money to survive. But I could right. literally walk out the door and get hit by a car tomorrow. And what what do I have to show for that? Right. That's I think if you're making thing. money, there's nothing wrong with making money. More power yeah. to you. I wish I made all the money. So because that's just one less thing to stress about. But I think a lot of people don't nowadays aren't looking at money as success people are growing Correct. intellectually they're they're and you know what i think it is is i think that we they're learning so much more at a younger age than than mm -hmm. we did and then at, than our parents did and so they're figuring out life a little earlier i think i think they're figuring out what they want out of life a little earlier yeah. and that's a big difference and finding out, you know, when you're late teens, early 20s, compared to finding out what you want out of life when you're in your mid 30s. There's a big yeah. difference there. There's a decade there that you can do stuff with. And I think that uh, there's there's nothing wrong with that. I think there's nothing wrong with prioritizing your 
fulfillment over your financial mm -hmm. as long as you can afford to eat and and sleep with a roof over your head comfortably mm -hmm. then you know more power to you that's how i would define success is mm -hmm. is being fulfilled i don't know that's interesting though how do you all describe success define success if you had to give us a short little story a short little sentence Put it in the comments, put it in our Discord, email us, whatever you have to do. TikTok, Twitter, it's all over the place. How would you describe or define success in your eyes? Because I'm very interested to know. Mm -hmm. Now, something I'm really interested to know is, I don't know who gave us this topic, but bravo to you. I need to know where the sayings come from. <laughs> they come from experiences in life because <laughs> there are some wild sayings out there yeah. but there's a lot of very popular ones and what i mean by saying is things like uh break the ice uh blood is thicker than water uh, mm -hmm. those kind of things uh caught red-handed things like that where do some of these come from were, were there any growing up that you you or your family said a lot honestly i kind of feel like my family never really had traditional sayings like mm -hmm. um that i would normally hear i almost feel like i've never really ever have heard them but i have heard like friends um one that resonates with me is the uh um oh my god this is gonna drive me crazy now it's from the the rule of thumb uh, and I only know that one because of the movie Boondock Saints, which was like my, I was obsessed with that movie. It's a good movie. Uh, yeah. And they basically said that the rule of thumb came from um, being whipped by a stick no yeah. thicker than no your thumb. No thicker than your thumb. Yeah, I knew that Yeah, one. so that was a whole thing. And that was one that I was just like, Jesus Christ, like people still say that today. Well, the rule of thumb is, and I'm like, why would you say it in this situation? It just doesn't sound right. It's so weird knowing this information. Another one that I do remember, which was crazy to me, was dying of laughter. I always wonder, I'm like, oh my God, I'm just, I'm dying of laughter. Why did As a kid, say that? were you afraid that if you laughed too hard, you were just going to we die? Gonna die. But that was the thing. So there was, uh, there were times in history where people actually died from laughing too much because of the pressure in their stomachs and they just couldn't breathe and they, they actually legitimately died. So it just made me think about different sayings, like how crazy the fact that these things have come to be because something somewhere out there, something happened that made the saying a thing. It's just, it's odd to me. Yeah. There's one here that I'm reading and it really, I just don't get it. Uh, and let me know if you've heard of this, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I've heard that one growing what? up. I've never heard of that one growing up. I don't think I've ever heard of that one until it just came out of your mouth. <laughs> just now. Apparently, it's referring, it literally started in the 1500s. That's how far back this one goes. And Jesus. that's back when people would bathe one time a year. They would they would take a bath one time a year in the fifteen hundreds, and apparently women that had babies would take baths with their babies, and the water, as you can imagine, would get really really dirty, really <laughs> cloudy, really like you couldn't see, and they would go to like. Apparently, they had to be really careful, so like infants' mothers didn't throw them out <laughs> with the bath water. I like how. I imagine they I have them like sitting in the tub with them, like with very little water, and the baby could like okay. slip under or something. I don't know. Bad parenting is 1500s just... as well. <laughs> because, okay, so when I but picture. But that's a where bath, the saying came from. And I picture a bath, I'm picturing a bath of like filled with water, and I'm just like, how do you not know that your infant is in there? Like it should still be in your hands. Apparently, the whole time. it happened it's enough for this to become a saying. <laughs> That stuck oh. around for hundreds of years. I don't buy it. These motherfuckers were just trying to get rid of their babies. I, I don't fucking buy it. <laughs> okay, I changed my time machine answer. I'm going to go back to the 1500s <laughs> now. <laughs> I need to see this. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, lady, your infant is laying 
the bottom of your tub. I don't know where you think it got up and went <laughs> while you were drying off with your poison ivy leaves, but... Like, a baby could just flip over and drown in, like, an inch of water. Like, it just, I can't, it just, my brain is not processing this saying right now. I'm yeah. concerned. I just wonder how some of these stick <laughs> and where they come from. Uh, bite the bullet was another one. Did you, have oh you ever heard? I've heard you gotta of that. bite the I've, bullet? I've heard that. I don't know where that one's come from, though. That one, uh, that one means like accepting something that's uh, difficult, or you you just gotta bite the bullet and do it. Doing something that you kind of dread doing, something like that. Uh, apparently, there was no time to administer anesthesia before emergency surgery during battle back in the day. I don't know what year, but the surgeons made patients bite down on a bullet in an attempt to distract them from the pain. Hmm. So that's where it came from. That sounds very painful. Just trying to bite a bullet. Oh God. Yeah, that does sound more painful than the the actual surgery. I think. Uh, butter someone up was another one. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta butter them up a little bit. What? <laughs> imagine the first time you heard that. Remember, like I don't remember the first time I heard it, but I imagine I immediately just pictured somebody getting covered in butter. <laughs> same big same <laughs> butter someone up obviously for those who don't know means to flatter someone to butter them up to kind of uh compliment them things like that do you have yeah. any other ones any other rub sayings that you wrong, grew up rub the wrong way oh I, like being rubbed the wrong way yeah because i use that all the time i'm like just person just is just rubbing me the wrong way right and i i i actually just found it here on this list and it's um back in colonial america servants were required to wet rub and dry rub oak oak board floors each week i couldn't even say that mm -hmm. which i that makes sense now like i can totally i could see that but doing it against the grain caused streaks of forms which would make the wood look awful and irritating to the homeowner which again i could see that like doing woodwork in my life you just you don't want to make it look unappealing mm -hmm. so i could totally see how that could be a saying i honestly thought it was something completely different i thought <laughs> it was just like i thought it had to do with like you know when you pet a dog or a cat the wrong way and then they get all angry at you yeah i felt like it was like that like it had to do with that apparently i was wrong <laughs> One big one, and I, I really don't know where it came from. I don't have anything, but one big one that we grew up with that my family said a lot, not just like my immediate family, my whole family, uh, aunts, uncles, cousins, like a whole family, we always said, and you say it a lot. It's really funny when I hear you say it because I thought it was just an our family thing, but it's for mm -hmm. the love. <laughs> for the love. Just that's the whole saying, just for the mm -hmm. love, like for the love of God type of situation. Mm -hmm. yep. But it's just shortened. It's like the lazy way of saying that. Uh, and it's basically when just things are just uh, almost ridiculous to you. Like for yeah. the love. Like what in the world is going on here? Yeah. Why is this happening? Yeah. Yeah. I do that all the time. Yeah. I just think it's a uh, it's a habit that's hard to break. All these sayings, but are mm -hmm. there going to be new sayings? Are we are we coming up with new sayings at all? I feel like we eventually will come up with new sayings as more things happen. Yeah, like there's going to be new things coming up. I feel like things like I don't know. I was going to say like Karens, but not really. Yeah, I guess Karens could kind of, but that's not really a saying. That's just no. a title. It's like, don't be a Karen. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's going to be a saying. People are like, wait, what? Right. <laughs> uh -huh. I always pictured waking up on the wrong side of the bed. That one being just completely, as a kid hearing that one, I was like, how do you get, to, what's the wrong, am I sleeping on the wrong side of the bed? <laughs> <laughs> I actually know where that one came from. I think, I think this is where it came from. Uh, back when I, I was younger, we used to like talk about, I believe we talked about this in another uh, segment, but uh, like the witchcraft and witchery and like all that stuff and good magic, black magic, all that, that nonsense. Mm -hmm. um, it, there was a thing that it actually stated in one of like the, the good books is that you, where you slept and how you positioned your bed 
meant different things like for example you don't want to position your bed facing a door because that means your spirit can walk up and walk out of the door like that's what Mm. that was whole thing so the waking up on the wrong side of the bed they had a belief that you had to sleep on a certain side of the bed depending on the positioning of your room because if you didn't you would be um you would be allowing access to evil spirits and sinister things coming Mm. to you so that's why they said wait wait, if you woke up on the bad side of the bed is because wait what if you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, it's because you actually allow these things to happen and right. you usually are in a bad mood that day. That makes sense. Have you ever went on what's our next viewer topic, a vacation and slept on a bed that was just the best bed you've ever slept in and made you hate your own bed? <sighs> Every single fucking <laughs> time I go to a hotel, the first thing I do is plop into that bed and just cuddle with like the pillows and the comforter and just. I, I want to sleep for like a good hour before I even do anything. Get in there nice and deep with those bed bugs mm-hmm. and yes, and all <laughs> that semen and yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. I get you just have to block that out of your mind when you stay you at do. hotels. You That's do. your only option, or bring your own blankets. But then you're in, like you're putting your own blankets on that stuff. So I don't know. <laughs> I, you can wash yourself off. I feel like easier than you can wash yeah blankets. But I don't know. I. Uh, Vacations are fun, though. I do love vacations. I used to take vacations all the time growing up as a kid. And then I grew up and we stopped. So there was that. I, I'm dying for my next vacation, which hopefully will be next October. Hopefully it will be next October. But we'll see. We'll see if I can get a vacation in a year. Other than that, like, I feel like staycations is something that I've done, but it's just not the same. Yeah, traveling. I I feel like that's my like that's my type of vacationing is just staying, staying home where you are and not doing anything. Period. <laughs> just getting fat, eating, sleeping, being lazy. I wish I could do that, but I also have a kid and responsibilities that I just I right. Wanna, well, you need a vacation <laughs> from the break. kid. Yeah, I need a I need a break from right. my responsibilities. Yeah, I think everybody deserves a break, right? Yeah. I think that's what it is. What's one of your favorite vacations nights. you've ever been on? Oh, my Lord. Uh, that's, ooh, why would you ask me this? Oh, my gosh. Um, you know what? As beautiful as the places I've gone to have been, and I want to say every time we went down to Kissimmee, Florida, and stayed at the timeshare and went to Disney World and... Universal Studios and SeaWorld and the, the go-kart places and the water parks and like the I feel like that will always be my favorite thing in the world because it was just experiences and just mm-hmm. fun and I've been to like tropical but I've been to Hawaii right. Dominican Republic I've been to Ecuador I've been to like other countries I've been to every state and that was the best now I I will say I lived in Colorado if I were to vacation in Colorado, I definitely would be visiting like the mountains and the the lakes and things like that. Like that was a lot of fun to me. Mm-hmm. But even then, like I remember going to Lake George and going, you know, down the river, river rafting and stuff like that. And it's just there was something different about the match, like one of the most magical places on earth. Yeah. So it was more the reason you enjoyed it so much was because of the fun you had, not necessarily where you were at or the scenery. Yeah. And- And it wasn't even like just like downtown Disney, for example, downtown Disney had has like this huge arcade, which was open from 11 to 11 and had every game you could possibly think of, like Mm -hmm. V like VR games, regular like retro games, new games, like all these different things. And like even like the little nightlife area over there, like it was just the experiences and just how much fun it was. And it was just the culture and Mm -hmm. like the pace it was just everything about like that area in orlando that i just i love even staying at the timeshare just lounging by the pool like just there was something about that area Mm -hmm. that just me growing up we went there all the time and it was just it just felt it felt like home it was like a home away from a home that was a vacation yeah so it's comfort is it was uh, very comforting yeah that's fair. That's fair. I agree. I, I went on a cruise one time and we went to Honduras and uh, there was a little island there that we got to dock at and go out and explore and do different things and whatnot. 
and I could have been left on that island and never seen again and been mm -hmm. one of the happiest people on the planet because I was in love with that island. It was mm -hmm. just a it was just a one day stay, really. I think we were just there for the day, and there were just like it was the it was that hippie beach life that I want to live. You know, it was that perfect like yeah, just perfect weather all day every day there. Uh, and because I've been there a couple times now, and every time I go there, it's just it's unbelievable. Every time the scenery, it's beautiful. The water is beautiful. Uh, it's just. It's that like ideal tropical vacation. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That tropical mm -hmm. vacation spot that you see in the movies and you're like, oh, I'd love to go there. It, it was that one of those type of places. It's just relaxing. I'm just all about that old person, hippie, relax and vibe out yeah. type of vacation. Now, and, if there's a place that you would want to go on vacation that you haven't gone to, where would that be? Hawaii or Australia. Ooh, interesting. I haven't been to either of those. I know they're very simple, basic places, but I haven't been to either one, and I really want to go to both of I've them. I've always wanted to go to Australia, too. I've been to Hawaii. It is definitely, I will tell I people. would get married if I went to Hawaii. Uh, Hawaiian women are, like, the most beautiful people in the world in my <laughs> eyes, and it would be a problem. Like, I would definitely be married the first week I was there. I would be proposing. <laughs> I'd just be proposing to people I didn't know. I'd just be like, you, here, a ring, li uh, good life, I, I, here. You know, oh Words my god, hard. that's adorable. You know who does that? Or what does that? Penguins. They present rocks to the women until one says, your rock is beautiful, and I will marry you. That's that's me. That's what I would do. You're carry my. I would carry my rock around. <laughs> And just try to give it to people <laughs> and hope somebody accepted it. <laughs> That's adorable. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. I think I would want to go to Bora Bora. Okay. I don't know what's is that there. I always, where they have like the huts over the water and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would love I to do that. I want to go to Bora Bora more than that anything in the world. incredible As to me. a vacation. I would never want to live there, but damn sure. Mm -hmm. If I ever get married, that's my honeymoon. I'm going to have like no reception, no wedding. Just like, let's get the fucking marriage thing at the courthouse and we're going to fucking Bora Bora. That's Bora -Bora. where the money is going. We're spending a month in Bora Bora. Yeah. Why would you? Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, fuck the like, party. I don't give a fuck about a party. Forget the reception forget the <laughs> wedding i'm going straight to the vacation give me the We're honeymoon going to honeymoon that's, <laughs> that's it that's all i want to do uh well we talked about some fun viewer topics but we got one here that uh it's just annoying i think more than anything uh, yeah yeah if i had to say it but there's something that's that's kind of gone around. A lot of people say it's not a real thing. A lot of people say it is a real thing. I don't really know what's real and what's not anymore because I really couldn't care any less about mm -hmm. it. But uh, cancel culture is a thing in, in this generation. Yeah. And it needs to stop. I don't even understand it. it I, don't needs even, to stop. I just don't even understand it. I, is it boredom? I think it is boredom. I think people just have way too much time on their hands. People like to be involved in other people's business, and they really, really shouldn't have no, uh, have no right to be in it. And I right. feel like because in people... most cases, nobody has a hundred percent of the facts of everything. Yeah. No. So. Uh... On and truth is in the eyes of the perceptor anyway, because perception is everything. But what do you think? What what started this whole? this whole thing i don't know to be honest it's been a thing for a very long time mm -hmm. i feel like with groups and cliques and right. class and things like that but i feel like do you think it starts been... at like a young age like with cliques in school yeah. and things like that yeah trying to find out like what's cool what's not cool like what's hit what's not and then Who, who's I feel cool like... who's not cool yeah yeah and as you get older i feel like it changes because yeah. you start like people who are in like the groups that were quote unquote uncool, like they start to make their own groups of like, all the uncool quote unquote right, uncool kids. Island of Misfit Toys. Group. And it's just it just goes on and on and on and on forever. But what I can't stand about it is people who are throwing stones 
when they live in a glass house. Mm, yes, that's a big one. They need to stop. They yes. need to stop doing There's it. And a stop. lot of hypo- hypocrisy in cancel culture for sure. And definitely the people who want to put their two cents into something uh, for somebody or a group that doesn't involve them. Yeah. Yeah, that no, yeah. It bothers yeah, me. Yeah, there's one thing in supporting a group, and there's another in leading a group, being offended for other people. Yeah. You can't you can't be offended for other people. That's not a thing. And that seems to be lost on a lot of people. Yeah, you can, and that's... you can be offended for like for them. Like you can say, Oh man, they're the way they're being treated is unfair and it's offensive. That's fine. But you can't physically be offended for for them if they're not offended you can't be like you can be but you just keep that to yourself honestly yeah like don't jump the gun and try to do something and advocate for don't be an advocate for it if you want to talk to that person and say hey do you need help fighting this because i feel like you're being treated unfairly i feel like that's that's how you support people that's how you support people i don't know i think uh the cancel culture thing, I think it... I don't know. Everything is canceled. This, but that's the problem. Everything is canceled. Every word you say, every person mm-hmm. you interact with, everything that is out there in the world, everything is just constantly canceled. Yep. And it's just it's to the point where you don't even know if you can go outside and say something to somebody and say, like, hello to a person without being offensive because of who you are and what you're doing. And, oh, well, mm-hmm. no, you, you can't talk to that person and you're canceled now because of X, Y, and Z. It doesn't make any fucking sense, people. Like, they just need to stop. They just need to relax, wind it down. Stop worrying about worry about your damn self. Stop worrying about that's other the, people. That's why I say it's got to be boredom, right? It's got to be boredom. People Maybe. are just bored with their lives so they're just they're trying to stir up create drama and life to just any kind of feel any kind of excitement at all yeah i can't i I can't understand like i can't understand any other possible reason for it but like it honestly it hurts a lot of people and it needs to stop because you're grouping up groups that Mm -hmm. don't necessarily want to be grouped together sometimes right because you're making assumptions and then you're off here canceling you're stereotyping the whole thing. you're you're yeah. doing these things that you think you're supposed to to do because you're like oh i'm supposed to feel this way i'm supposed to feel that way and you shouldn't do that just because you feel that way you can affect somebody's mental health so easy just by assuming instead mm-hmm. of getting the facts and talking to somebody Mm-hmm. that's associated with it you guys might have more in common than you even think <laughs> <laughs> i agree uh, cancel but culture yeah just needs to stop cancel culture is uh it's kind of ridiculous and i just hope we we find our way as humans and start learning to support each other and treat each other with respect and dignity and that goes mm-hmm. every direction Yep. That goes that I've always hated that that goes both ways saying because it goes every direction. There's not just two ways of life. There's mm-hmm. so many different ways of life and it goes every direction. Just treat each other with respect. That's, it. That's all you Be have mindful. to do. It's not hard at all. Mhm. And uh I don't know. Maybe that'll help people that are not treating others with respect. Maybe it'll help them get a perspective on yeah. Maybe how they should live their life, correct? Because you can do what? What is it you you attract more bees with honey or something like that? <laughs> What's that I saying? Think, There's a saying there as well. I think it's you attract more flies with honey. Maybe it's flies. I don't. I <laughs> you attract it was something. That. You attract something with honey. Uh, so just you be sweet bears. out there folks <laughs> is, is what i'm trying to say you attract bears, bears. oh goodness <laughs> what are you gonna do if you're in arkansas no if you're in colorado and a bear comes at you and all you have is a catapult well you're gonna catapult it right no you're not because not? in this segment of weird laws we're gonna tell you how that is illegal what? I can't use my catapult to catapult a there is oncoming no, bear. No, <laughs> a law in Colorado says no catapulting. <laughs> That's the law. 
Okay, so you that's can own Colorado. one. You can own one in Colorado. You just can't catapult. You can't use it. That's awesome. Uh, but we can use it in other con- in other states, right? I mean, I reckon. I don't know. You'd have to check <laughs> with the state. I'd imagine. No, you know, catapulting's a big problem across the nation. I think. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, it's just. Uh, it's one of the funniest things I've ever read. Just no catapulting. I, I don't know how you, where to, that had that came into fruition for some reason, that became a law for some that, reason. Yeah. It probably was somebody that was just catapulting things left and right off of mountains or something, and it was just killing villages that were at the bottom of the mountains and causing mm-hmm. mass chaos. Yeah. If I had to take a fucking guess. That's funny. What's another one here? What's another weird law thrown at so, us this week? The one that bothers me the most is in Arkansas, or how I like to say it, Arkansas. You have to pronounce the state name correctly. It is against the law to not say Arkansas. And I know that rhymes when it shouldn't. <laughs> uh, you just said it wrong, though. What do you mean? You, you called it Arkansas. I know, but I'm not in Arkansas, so I will say that. <laughs> oh, okay, so if you're in the if you're in the state, you have to say it. You properly. have to say it correctly in the state, otherwise. What if, what if you like sign it in like sign language? <laughs> I mean, I'm I don't think there's a wrong way to say it that way, is there? <laughs> I don't think you can add different inflections. Yeah, I don't saying. know. I don't know. I don't know how <laughs> ASL works. It's above my pay grade. I, I have no idea. But I don't know. I think that's interesting. What are they going to do? Uh yeah, we're going to have to take you downtown. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you said you said Arkansas wrong. We're going to put you in. <laughs> we're going to put you in the Arkansas City Jail. What do you mean, Arkansas City Jail? You're sitting No, no, Arkansas is the town. I would be infuriated, especially if they spelled it the same way. Yeah. I would be so mad. It's Arkansas, Arkansas. That's where we're taking you. <laughs> but you were referring to the state, so you said it wrong. You're locked up. Barney Fife. <laughs> I would be pissed. That's I would be hella funny. pissed. Well, something you can't do in Florida, which What's is that? good to know, uh, you can't sell children. <laughs> what? You can't sell children <laughs> in Florida. Uh, I'm not positive what that means about the rest of the states. <laughs> it's a little concerning. <laughs> I mean, why why are we selling children though? For what purpose is is, is this a thing? You can get a real good deal on avocados, I think. I don't really know. Ooh, you know what? That might be that might be worth it. That might be worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh that's a, such a weird thing. It's in Florida, you can't sell children. I'm gonna have to make sure that, that it's not something you can do in any other state. That seems like that should be across the board. Maybe well, I, I don't even know how adoption works. Like you pay a fee for adoption, right? Would that be considered selling a child? Ooh, true. Can you not adopt? <laughs> yes. Uh, as O'Henry in our chat says, please do not Google that, folks, because yeah, that's going to get you put on a list uh, <laughs> that you don't want to be on. I promise you. I I think that's you're definitely going to end up on some sort of list if you if you search that. Uh, so please be advised. Do not search anything about it. <laughs> uh, it's for what, purposes. What else? If you go, it. what happens if you go up, go up a state sky, and you want to try to keep your hands clean while eating some chicken? Well, I'm gonna use a knife and a fork. Up in Georgia, eat their their famous fried chicken. Nope. Why not? You can't eat fried chicken with utensils in Georgia. That is just ridiculous. So I'm going to have to actually lick my fingers. Is it really going to be finger looking good? What if it's not finger, finger looking good? Finger looking good. What if it What ain't? if the chicken is baked, not fried? That's my question. Huh. We're going to have to test this out. What if it's, well, I mean, chicken tenders, you could do that. 
A lot of people what if it's... eat fried chicken, though, with their hands. I mean, that's how you eat, like, drumsticks and things. That's true. But, like, a breast, like, I feel like sometimes I cut that a little bit. Or even, like, a thigh. Right. right. It's, like, such, it's just, like, a small bone and then more meat on it. I like to stick my well, fork in it. What if you had, like, a chicken salad? Yeah, that's right. What if, well, I mean, is it just fried chicken or not grilled chicken Yeah, strips? I think it's just fried chicken. Uh, the that's law so said uh, you can't eat fried chicken with utensils in georgia like, my kid likes to eat fried chicken with a utensil he'll like stab the chicken and then just eat around it so he doesn't dirty his hands he hates dirty hands which yeah it's weird because he's a kid right that's well, i get that i hated that too as a kid but that's just kind of a me ocd thing i think <laughs> uh but yeah you can't eat fried chicken with utensils in georgia uh which i don't think uh, I don't think would be a problem uh, to use anywhere but Idaho on another meat. What meat's that? What I could only imagine to be the worst tasting meat imaginable. Uh, human meat. Idaho. Long pig. I, yeah, Idaho is the only state with an active ban on cannibalism. Wait, so that means I could eat somebody here where I'm at in New York? I think if they give you permission legally, so the feds can the federal government cannot. How would that even come up in conversation? Like, excuse me, um, can I eat you? Like not out. I'm like, not saying that you. to anybody ever. <laughs> because I'm not getting a, a, a harassment charge put on me. I don't like I that's not happening. I'm not saying those words to any human ever. <laughs> uh, a girl walks up to you, hmm. she's like, excuse me, sir, can I eat you? You Start can lick your lips. Dick. <laughs> Just walk away. <laughs> I'm just concerned on why Idaho is the only state that has this active ban. <laughs> yeah, I am kind of curious to that as well. Like, what, why did it actually happen? Does it happen a lot in Idaho? Are, are y'all that bored in Idaho that you actively go out seeking ways to eat each other? Uh... And for those who stick around that do want to eat other people, have y'all moved to a different state? Leave the comments. <laughs> well, Idaho is the only one. It's the only place you want to be right now, apparently, because it's the only place you can't do it. It's illegal. It makes me want to get out of out Everywhere of else in California. Idaho. I'm moving. We're moving the show to Idaho, everybody. <laughs> I'm not trying to get eaten while walking what down if, the street. What if what if it's like a life or death situation, though? Like well, there's two people. I'm going to need you to elaborate on that. Okay, so like, let's say you go hiking out in like the mountains or some shit, and y'all get like you, it's you and one other person. Y'all get stranded and shit hits the fan, and y'all aren't going to survive, and y'all like have no food, and then that person is just like, like if I don't make it, you can eat me. It's totally fine. You need to live. Like, I feel like I'm you... going to go out of this world telling somebody to eat me <laughs> at some point. Like, I'm, I feel like that's going to happen regardless. So uh, hopefully they don't take it literally. <laughs> if they do, I'll be dead. Who cares? I'm not going to know. I just think. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess if you're just trying to save your life maybe i don't know but pegasus in our chat brings up a good point maybe it's something to do with women eating their placenta would that be considered cannibalism i don't know because like that is a really good question and that was the thing that was asked when I was giving birth. Like they were like, "Are you?" Oh yeah, no. My sister helps deliver babies all the time. She said that's mm -hmm. a thing that people do. Yeah, they do. They freeze dry it. They cook it. They they do so many things with it. Make it into teas. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at a comment, and I I know I'm going to regret reading it out loud, but I can't 
I can't let the people that aren't here uh, <laughs> not you. experience it. Um, oh, Henry uh, says, what if a girl or a guy swallows? That is a fair point. That is a fair point. Can't do it. You can't do it in Idaho, I guess, because those are technically unborn children. We're going to need some answers, Idaho. Yeah, We're going to need y'all to reach out and let us know what's happening. Please. Please do Idaho. I need is, I need this answers. Is urgent information that's needed <laughs> no. for the public. Cause now, okay, so now here's the thing. Now knowing that could be a possibility that a girl going down on you can't swallow, would you still go to Idaho to avoid cannibalism? Man, that's a that's a double edged sword. Right? A double-edged sword. I mean, I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm gonna worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I just think uh, I don't know. Maybe I'd live on the on the border. <laughs> Meet me at the hotel. <laughs> Meet me at the Stay hotel line. about two miles that direction. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm carrying. I'm carrying a gun with me. I, yeah, absolutely, I am. <laughs> I'm going to enter that state over there where you're allowed to eat people. <laughs> she might bite that dick off. You never know. Jeez. <laughs> Moving on. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Moving on indeed. Indeed, moving on. We watched a movie last night, and I, that was our movie of the week. It was a good one. What was it? Tell us about the movie of the week, Sky. It was called Unfaithful. Mm -hmm. uh, you pick this it's... one. Every week we pick, sorry, every week mm -hmm. we pick, one of us picks a movie for the other one to watch that they haven't seen. And then we talk about it here. Thoughts on it, just movies that we've liked or we just want the other person to watch. Or ones that we neither of us watched and we just kind of give you a little bit of a review about it. And Skylo mm -hmm. picked mm -hmm. uh, Unfaithful this week, which was an older movie. It was a much older movie. I don't honestly. I can't even tell you like how old it is. Mm -hmm. Um, I it has Richard Gere in it. It has uh the youngest son Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle. He's in 2002 it. 2002 was the year. Oh wow, 2002. So almost 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow, this that was movie. almost 20 years ago. It was almost 20 years. Oh ago. Oh my goodness! I graduated <laughs> high school in 2005, and that... I know. How does that make you feel? Oh, not well. <laughs> Not very good at all. Oh, yeah. So the movie itself, I stumbled upon it. I don't even know how. It was like one of those things that was just happened to be on the TV one day. And watching it, like in the very beginning, you're like, okay, like what's going on here? Because the story kind of just like, it's very like bits and pieces of story. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like it shows you like the emotional, um, where the emotional level of each character is, like an exact time. And then it kind of shows like different parts of different scenes and it's like flashbacks so there's, there's a lot going on to the mm -hmm. movie so you kind of really do have to pay a little bit of attention i kind of feel like the movie has more of an emotional feel to it than anything yeah um just as it states unfaithful i mean you can only guess that the movie involves somebody being unfaithful um right. but it also involves the implications of what that could do to somebody and it may be as outlandish as this movie, but it gets real rather quickly in a short span of time. And it's just, it's things that make you think about your relationship, your current relationship, if you are in one, future relationships, past relationships, what you would have done in these situations. Because a lot of the time during the movie, we would ask ourselves the questions like, what would you do if you were, that was you? Like, would this be okay? Like, would that be okay? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like one of those movies that really makes you think. That's that's very valid. It's a very valid point. Uh, I had to think a lot through it, and I was trying to figure it out. I kept like, I kept trying to figure it out as we went along, and I was like, "Oh, they did that, or this means this, or oh no, she knows this, or he knows that." And I was like, really <laughs> into the movie because it, it was. I did. I wasn't told anything. She she told me nothing about this movie at all. And it was good, though. Like, I was a just a fresh set of eyes watching this movie with no expectations, no clue what I was going into. And I immediately got sucked into the story. <laughs> and you wouldn't think it. 
you honestly, like, people have looked at this movie and looked past it, and they wouldn't think that they would like it. Like, it does take a little bit of time in the beginning mm -hmm. to kind of, like, start getting into it. And I feel like most people don't really give it a chance because once it starts going into it, because that's what happened to me. I, it was just a movie on the background while I was cleaning up the living room. Right. And as I was watching and really listening, I was just like, wait, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my god! Like, like you just you couldn't believe what was happening. Yeah. Definitely, definitely worth a watch if you kind of like some older movies. I would mm -hmm. recommend it. Uh, and you see Diane Lane's boobies. Yeah, that's a thing. Often a thing. in that movie, actually. So, <laughs> if that interests anybody, I just uh, <laughs> thought I'd let you guys know about it. Yay, uh -huh. boobs! <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. It's October, Sky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you know what street we gotta walk up, right? Spooky street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's spooky. Very, very spooky. <laughs> uh, what's spooky to you, Sky? Something that scares you. Well, we all know I have a fear of the darks, but you know what's really bad when it's really dark is when you go into graveyards. I don't like graveyards i am terrified of them i don't like passing them i don't like driving near them i lived in an apartment that had one right behind the house there's there graveyards everywhere close to me like i can't stand graveyards they freak me out they freak me out just the feel like i can't walk in there without feeling the hair is standing up in the back of my neck and like goosebumps all over me my mic was turned off yeah i like uh I like graveyards. They are they're so interesting to me. I don't know why. I know that sounds weird. That sounds <laughs> I very get it. weird. There's history in graveyards. There's a lot. Well, it's just um, it's, and this is a. <laughs> I'm letting you guys into a little bit of my brain here. Uh, I like to imagine what people are like if they were all like ghosts that were just stuck at their like plots. <laughs> Just to, to and they could socialize with the other ghosts and the plots around them and stuff and just like 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 they could stay in the cemetery they could go go around the cemetery or whatever but they stay in there and they can only it's like their own little private town uh it's funny to me to, to think like who would be like neighbors with who because you gotta think about this everybody gets buried or you know if they get buried everybody that dies for the most part gets buried of all of humanity of all of time if they don't Burials. get if they don't yeah. you know there's going to be serial killers right next to your betty white level people Aww, right next to so sad to think about right isn't that terrible Aww. That's horrible. And welcome to my life. What about pet cemeteries? I don't know that I've ever been to a pet cemetery, but after the movie, I don't think I could. I could do it. <laughs> uh, we're getting questions in the chat right now. No, Betty White is uh, at this moment in time alive and healthy. Wait, your tongues. Uh, that woman is a. I was a saying. Saint, a I was treasure. using her as an example of somebody that was a, an amazing person. Yes, I was trying to go oh for the God. opposite of a serial killer. And <laughs> Betty White just, is who came to mind. She's my hero. Like, you guys just know. Put that out into the universe that she is okay. She's alive. She's, I'm going to die before Betty White. Right. I, that's, that is a fact. <laughs> what do what do they do if that was a thing? What do you think would be like the... If the ghosts were just around? Yeah. I don't know. I would everybody be to see like well, if the, people the, knew you, the, your only icebreaker is how did you die right like yeah I but I feel like that would make the cemetery crowded because everybody would want to go and visit their loved ones and talk to them mm -hmm. I would always would I would be... feel bad for the ones that never get any visitors oh why did you make it even sadder <laughs> cemeteries <laughs> graveyards are very they're very sad now, places honestly now i feel bad about being scared because like usually okay every time i walk into a graveyard again like it was just like an immediate feeling of crossing that threshold and like feeling like there were just eyes on me constantly mm -hmm. 
I don't know if it was a me thing in my own head or if there really were things watching me. I don't know. But now that you're saying this, maybe there were really things watching me and I couldn't you see them. Never and they just know. wanted to talk to me. And I'm over here being all creeped out. And it was just like this poor like kid or something that was just like, my parents never visit me anymore because they're long and dead. And now there's just like <laughs> little girls. They're holding a teddy bear. But why would you do this to me? Oh, yeah. I never thought about that. You took it even deeper than what I would have this taken it. That's this is, this is, this is, mm. <laughs> what she said. I want to know uh, what would you guys prefer out there? Let us know in the comments. Let us know anywhere you can. Discord, live chat currently. Do you guys want to be buried in a cemetery? I don't. Or do you mm -hmm. want to be... Uh, what's the the other option? The cremation, cre cremated, cremated. Uh, I you have a very interesting thing that you <laughs> want. Yes, I do. I want a Viking's funeral. I want to be put in a little boat, and I want to be pushed out into sea with hay and everything. Fucking douse me with lighter fluid if you have to. And all you fuckers that are still alive and are my friends and my family. You guys are going to get bows and arrows that are lit on fire, and you're going to launch them at me and set me ablaze as I drift off into the ocean world, into death. Until you get somebody that's a really bad shot, and then you just drift off and you never get it. I never get it. They never, the arrow <laughs> never hits you. It never hits me. Yeah, that's that's the way I would go. If that if that can't be an option, then I want to do the thing that I did with my dog that had recently passed, which was aquamation, um, which was able to convert his remains into um, a soluble dirt uh, a lot quicker than you would with burial or things like that, because that's mm -hmm. what eventually happens is that everything just breaks down and turns. So um, you can plant me. And I would want to be a weeping willow. Plant me somewhere and make me a weeping willow because that is my favorite tree. That's I like that. That's a very uh, that's a very sentimental. Yeah, uh, and I want I want a tire swing on me, and I want like kids and people to swing on my branches. Right. Uh, when I was in college, we had cadavers. And I always thought that was an Ooh. interesting choice to to have done with your body. Yeah, donate science. donate your body to science. That is pretty cool. Because how else do we learn, you know? Oh man. And I want we that. got to <laughs> like I got to go in and and see cadavers and work with cadavers. And it was very interesting. Very interesting. And and all you can do is just like you literally just have respect for these people because yeah. it's like, man, like you are you are really helping the world right now with this. Yeah. You know, you sacrificed your beliefs for this, whatever they may have been. Which is is pretty cool. Uh, personally, I don't really care. <laughs> no. No, I don't really care. I really like uh, Sierra Tonin's uh, comment in the chat, which goes kind of along with yours, uh, which is being planted, basically. Oh, snap. <laughs> Twinsies. Yeah, and, and be, like, <laughs> turned into a tree of some sort or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, maybe not, a, like, a fruit tree or anything where people eat me. Oh, I uh, so I'm going to want to be buried in Idaho, I think, if <laughs> I'm buried anywhere. I don't think that counts. That doesn't count. No, that doesn't count? No, wow. that doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> I I do think it would be really cool, though, to just kind of be put back into the earth. Uh, me being the 420 friendly streamer that I am, it would be cool to become like a, a pot field. <laughs> That would be pretty cool. <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, that'd be perfect for me. I feel like that's a uh, that's a perfect that's a perfect way for me to give back to the world. <laughs> yeah, uh, so instead of eating me, you're smoking me, and it's all good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, what else? What's some other haunted things? Uh, we got way off track there, but uh, we're we're going down Spooky Street right now, uh, and there's some spooky things that people do that. 
we're not even aware of. Yeah, especially in these graveyards. But people have, like, rituals that they do, you know, Wiccanry, if you would like to go there, voodoo. Wiccanry? Did you say Wiccanry? Yes, I did. I'm making it a okay. word. Leave me alone. <laughs> I, do you do you? I'm just here. But, like, people do some crazy things that are just out of this world. And I, I get it. I know it's a thing. I had explained my story about the coconut way back yonder in one of our mm -hmm. previous episodes so that is technically a ritual it was just a a good and positive ritual but there are people who do bad rituals for example like sacrificing chickens or rabbits and things like that and people taking hair off of people and it's just what are they trying to accomplish <laughs> whatever voodoo that they're trying to do so each thing means something of purity and the more pure you can get to a thing the more the stronger the magic is for example okay. so like a live chicken getting the blood from a live chicken would be better than getting chicken blood from a grocery store chicken yeah kind of thing so it's, it's all about that listen guys if you want to have rituals have rituals don't sacrifice things i know that's all rituals are but now stop sacrificing innocent things and people. <laughs> now, there are there are good rituals like with candles and spices right. And Light a and candle, herbs, throw some salt in the air, do a rain dance, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Just don't we don't have to hurt innocent things and people. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, uh, take it to the extreme. Definitely, they definitely do. That is uh, that is a walk down Spooky Street. Something that we'll probably do most of this month. Uh, it's October, which is you know the spooky month, right? Mm -hmm. Halloween. Mm -hmm. People get really freaking excited about all of that. And uh, I don't personally get it, but I do kind of. It's mm -hmm. just more of a I'm I think I'm just too lazy to participate. <laughs> it's all it really is. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. Uh, but that spooky street leads us to our final segment. We are at the end of the show already, guys. Why does it come so fast? That's what I said all the time. Uh, it's yeah, definitely what she said. <laughs> oh. So we're going to end the show the way we always do, folks, with our hypothetical questions. And we have a really good one here. I like this one. It's a thinker. It's a thinker. It is. And the question is, if... You could only have three of the five senses. What would you choose? This one was really, really tough for me. Really tough for me. I am as blind as a bat without my glasses or contacts. With COVID, I've lost my sense of taste and smell. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do know how that feels. Um... I remember losing feeling before in my hands and not being able to feel things. Uh, it's a tough, and it's hearing, a tough one. Yeah, it's really hard. So honestly, I think if I could choose three out of the five, I would need my hearing. Mm -hmm. I definitely would need my taste. I would need to be able to taste food, but I don't. So here's the thing with tasting food. Like, it's usually correlated with smell. So do I want my smell or do I want my taste? I don't know. <laughs> um, and I I would have to say sight. I don't think I would care that much to feel anything. What about here? Did you say here? I think I said here. Yeah. Okay. Because I need to be able to listen to my music. I, I So couldn't... hearing, sight, and taste. Yeah, I think those would be my three that I would keep. Okay. I think smell and feel i can probably do without as long as like again if i didn't need the sense of smell to be able to taste things then i would keep taste if i needed the sense of smell then i would get rid of taste and i would just leave scent mm -hmm. it would just depend on which one was stronger i'm gonna have to agree with jake and heimer in our chat see hear and feel would be the three that i would pick I want to be able, I, I, seeing and hearing for me, I just, at this point, could never live without it. What about feeling? Uh, I, I need to feel thing. I need to be able to feel things. Like, I couldn't be just, like, not feel. That, seem, that just seems, like, weird to me. Uh, also, not eating, or not tasting or smelling things, 
you're going to be able to eat healthier because everything's yeah. going to be the same. No, there's not going to be a taste. That's true. That's true. You're going true. to be able to I just eat all that. the healthy foods that you want, and it's all going to you're not going to taste. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that wouldn't bother me because I love all foods, so it that really truly doesn't bother me. For me, feeling like I could just look at something and be like, okay, I can pick this up. I know fire's hot. I know, like you know, I, I kind of see that like the only thing i would be giving up with feeling is like the feeling of sex and i you know what whatever it, it, food is i can orgasm better with the food in my mouth than fucking food or a dick yeah i'm just saying <laughs> Tyler 22 everyone yeah i said it i said uh, it. no listen i'm right there with you you give me a hot chick or a big cheeseburger and say pick one it's the, the, the tough decision the tough decision for me Mm -hmm. uh, so I just don't know. I don't know how. Yeah, but if you can feel it, if you can feel the food in your mouth, because you're a texture eater, that mm -hmm. means you're going to be able to feel the textures. You probably still won't eat as healthy as well, you think Yeah, you but would. I, there's still healthy foods that have good textures. Yeah. I just don't eat the healthy foods because they taste like crap. <laughs> it's just I just don't like them. I was, I was raised on soul food you know that buttered down salted down mashed potatoes and mm, some God. macaroni and cheese and chicken oh, and steak see, and i want to taste that i want to taste i understand gravy. i understand oh, yeah, i would miss it for sure but i feel like after a while honestly after a very short time really i think you'd get used to it no i couldn't i d i did i was what was it two three months with covid Mm -hmm. And I couldn't taste anything. I was miserable. Miserable. I, but I wanted that to was because you knew you were eventually going to get it back. If you I just didn't. knew you were never going to get it back ever, I the rest didn't. of you, you got it back a little bit. No, I'm saying like I didn't know I oh. was going to get it back at all until like the very end of it when I started to have some of my senses because it was brand new then. It was yeah. still like a thing. Like that was when COVID like first started. So like I legitimately was like, oh my God, this is what if this is forever? I'm never gonna be able to taste pizza again, a cup of coffee, popcorn, like chicken, like a, a nice like salad, strawberries, like all these things, ice cream. I <laughs> I panicked. I was panicking. Yeah. <laughs> I I, can't, this, the, I, can't I just it. I don't know. I, I think because I kind of hate that we have to eat in general because I I hate trying to choose and find things that are healthy but also taste good and so it honestly would make my life a lot easier <laughs> i'd just buy all the healthy food that's it i'd just buy all that's the healthy true. food stock up on it and and eat it that's just greens and vegetables all your greens right. vegetables and and just try to stay as healthy as possible that way mm -hmm. uh so that was my thinking on on dealing without the the taste buds now uh what are our senses we have to choose from here? We have three of the five. Uh, see, hear, feel, touch. Or, no, feel is touch. Smell. Mm -hmm. What's taste. the taste? Uh, I can't, I couldn't, I was thinking taste and smell was like one. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, yeah, I, I think I could, uh, I could go, I could go without the, the smelling and the tasting. Yeah, that's that's just too much for me. No, oh, well, <laughs> I'll tell you how things taste like. Yeah, I'll just live you. vicariously through you or anybody. I'll you. just be like, hey, describe that to me, please. <laughs> At each spare time, no details. Each time, I'm gonna say, think about your best orgasm times that by a hundred <laughs> every time you ask. <laughs> oh my god! So a hundred then? That's good, you know. <laughs> I am going to call it on that right there, folks. Next week, right here on twitch.tv slash jalopy, we will finally be covering conspiracies. We also have the deep blue sea. That's right. Maybe we're going we'll to talk, talk about, about the conspiracies in the deep blue sea. Ooh, are there some? <laughs> Maybe. Do you think there's some? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. We'll find A out. A huge, huge shout out to all of our sponsors, uh, Pure Romance uh, by Rosanna, AV Carpet Care, RW Construction, Fiverr. If you guys are interested in uh, becoming a sponsor, buying ad space on this channel that does play throughout every episode right here on our on our live stream, our, our video feed, uh, please reach out to us, email us, 
not so common sense nscs at gmail.com or you can reach us on social media discord anything like that uh if you want to get in on the ground floor of this podcast thank you guys so much for being in the live chat you guys have kept us extremely entertained this entire time and we hope we did the same for you skylo is there anything uh, before we go i just i just i i'm so sad every time we end this i just get I immediately upset and i just i i don't know what to do anymore with my life for the next week what am i gonna do for the I whole week know. is you know what you know what? this is what i'll do i'll put out more stuff on social media so you guys can continue to support us that way there we go <laughs> you'll see a lot more coming we are thinking of some big plans coming up hopefully sooner than later you never know um so keep on a lookout for that keep in touch with our social media so you guys can get the day-to-days and figure out what's going on leave comments let us know how you guys like the show let us know if it's helped you in any way um we just want to hear from you guys mm-hmm. and absolutely you. your feedback is what keeps us going it keeps us motivated and keeps us wanting to just share as much common sense with you folks as we can because mm-hmm. it's it's lacking out there folks uh, but you guys seem to have it out here, so maybe we're making a little bit of a difference. Thank you all so much. Uh, we'll be back next Thursday, 11 p.m. Eastern, right here, twitch.tv slash jalopy. Guys, until next time, one thing to always remember, read, read the, the room. room.